I am one-fifth of a much bigger picture on this one. It is so easy to cheat at nature stuff. Just keep throwing things at it until it sort of starts to look good. Or if not good, then so busy that the viewer is more interested in what it holds than what it actually is. Hello everyone, Wylock here. Thank you for joining me today. About a month ago, on August 4th, 2021, I hosted a live stream on this channel. On that live stream was myself and four other personalities from across YouTube and Instagram who do tabletop gaming terrain crafting stuff. The purpose of the live stream was to do an audience-led brainstorming of a five-encounter D&D one-shot. They did that, and we came away with some cool stuff. After coming up with a concept and then the five encounters themselves, the assignments were doled out. Each of the five of us is to do a portion of them. I got the third section. Here's the abstract of the scenario. A dark wizard came to the Feywild and established his lichdom intent on poisoning and ultimately conquering all Fey creatures. He set up shop in an ancient, enormous, hollowed out tree because its equally enormous roots spread out far and wide. Corruption is beginning to manifest and radiate out into the Feywild further and further every day. The party has been called upon to figure out what's going on and put a stop to it. Now the portion I got, the third of the five encounters in the adventure, is when the players are inside the hollow tree fairly high up, scaling their way down. That portion of the adventure, what's it look like? So it's my job to come up with that and craft some terrain to represent it. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through how I did my portion, and then there are links in the video description below for the other four. And remember that our sponsor is Heroes Horde for you 3D printers out there. Excellent selection, including all True Tiles lines. Several years ago, I bought some cork bark and cut it into two inch strips. The intent was to use them as rock cliff faces after I'd seen some YouTube tutorial, but I never got around to it and they've been in this box ever since. Well. At long last, the time has come, perfect for simulating being inside of an enormous tree. I laid some out so that there'd be about a 50 to 60 foot inner diameter for the characters to be in, and then this is going to be mounted on chipboard. This is graphics medium chipboard. It's the same stuff you find at the back of a legal pad, but you can buy it in bulk like I do if you want. There's links in the video description below. Anyway, that is traced, and then cut out and then based in black. I use spray paint because it's real quick. Now the intended effect here is that we are high up in the trunk, so looking down is nothing but pitch blackness. You can see the bark of the, the walls going down into darkness hundreds of feet below. So I picked some acrylic paint colors that I hoped would sort of match the bark, because I'm not going to paint the bark, and then swipe from the outside in, outside in all the way around to start that simulated look of there's a pit below you. And then I got some grayish color, perfect gray-beige combination with a kitchen sponge and dabbed on some abnormalities. And then back to the brushwork with a cinnamon like sienna sort of color like you see here. You may find it helps to turn the brush sideways and slice instead of stroke. Kind of helps toward the effect. Also, you can tell that the texture of that chipboard, which is naturally a little bit rough and fibrous, is helping to sell the illusion even further. Kind of got lucky on that. The cork bark all just gets hot glued with healthy beads of hot glue to the base. Now, after that, it's kind of flimsy, and I'd prefer not to glue them to each other where they meet because there's not good spots to do that and you're gonna see blobs of hot glue. So with a second slab of chipboard, I'm gonna prep that, make it black, and then hot gluing on the bottom of the cork that's exposed as well as the entire underside of the surface. And this will create a nice sturdy sandwich, create two axes of control, and give me a very nice sturdy piece. So here it is so far, and I'm pretty happy with the effect. I lucked out on the colors, it was my first try. Looks like you're looking down an enormous tree trunk that's been hollowed out. Now I'm imagining that there are some outcrops on the interior diameter, so I cut smaller pieces of bark to make those, and there are places where I think sap would collect, and it's starting to become poisoned and corrupted, so these are going to be necrotic tree sap pits. GW Skulls. This box has lasted me for, I don't know, five years. I bought it when they first released it. Awesome. It's a must-have for any sort of fantasy terrain crafter.
Sculpt a mold, or modeling paste, or clay, or whatever your substance of choice is for shaping things and, and filling things out. I did that for the sap pits, and I made sure to sort of go up onto the walls to form a seal, because this there is going to be a resin pour later, and I cannot have any leakage. While it's still wet, I used some tweezers and inserted those GW skulls facing up. The intended effect will be that if you really pay attention and look into the sap, you'll have the ghostly visages of skulls looking at you. That's the difference between tree sap and necrotic tree sap. Skulls. That's scary. These are gray plastic, so I need to prime them. I used a brush on primer instead of spray because I certainly don't want to spray that cork bark. And then once that's dry, painted with a dark brown. This is raw umber. It's a desaturated, dark, nasty brown. And I'm using sort of a stabbing technique with a big, fat, bristled brush. Because that sculpt mold which dried overnight, is a very dry texture and it just drinks in paint. Now back to that grayish I used before with the kitchen sponge and a light dry brushing and voila! The visage of ghostly skulls comes out. Now the camera's a little overexposed here. This looks quite bright. In real life it's, it's a bit darker. It's a pretty nice effect. Art and Glow, this is my preferred resin. If you use it, be sure to mix it 50-50 and mix it a good two minutes. Whenever I've had it fail and still be sticky days later, meaning it didn't fully cure, it's because I didn't mix it well enough. And I'm using an acrylic ink. These are very pigment rich, so a drop will do you. Maybe two. I think I went back here and added a second, but be careful not to overdo it because a drop goes a long way. Here I'm doing a high pour from off screen to eliminate air bubbles. Obviously it doesn't work because there's tons of air bubbles in there. That's okay, we'll fix that in a moment. And then the sap is seeping out of tree bark, that's what it does, right? So with a sacrificial brush that's going to be thrown out, I just threw some weeping trails onto the wall. A couple tricks you might see out there to help get rid of bubbles in resin. You can use a hot air dryer, maybe on low, and I've had that work before, it didn't work here, so I took out a lighter. You can also use a torch, this gets hot enough. Now I'm doing very short controlled bursts here, not nearly long enough to reach ignition temperature, so fire isn't a hazard here. I've done this before, that said, if you're a kid doing a project like this, do not do it without adult supervision. So very short bursts of heat right near the bubbles and they go away. Now I have a little used drawer full of fake foliage. I got miniature flowers and leaves and grass and stuff, so it's time to pillage that drawer. Now look at these leaf clusters. There's an interesting story behind these. These I bought way back when I did the jungle scatter terrain pieces, like I don't know, a year, two years ago. And I had some left over. They didn't all get used. They were at the bottom of the drawer. And in fact, they, they, like, they work as a clip for miniatures. See, look, they can hold a miniature. So if I attach it vertically to a wall, these can represent the players gradually scaling their way down whatever they have available to help get down the inside of this trunk, which is probably protruding foliage. So I love that these could be used to actually show the miniature where it is as opposed to abstracting where it is. Now I'm rolling out my Sherbonder silicone mat and laying out some long strands of hot glue. Thick beads of hot glue overlapping each other randomly. The intent is that these will look like creeping vines. Once they cool, because it's silicone and nothing sticks to silicone, peels right off. I'm going to go spray prime that, and while the spray primer's drying, let's move on. I made another outcrop with a bit of cork. And this is where we're going to house some rare plants, actually not rare, this is the only location in the entire cosmos, in the entire multiverse, all of the planes, this is the only place you will find certain herbs or flowers or something. This tree is ancient beyond reason, and the corrupting influence of the Lich has only made things weirder. So, the idea is... Some character that's knowledgeable in herbology or potions or whatever would recognize that a potion maker could do something very, very special with these ingredients. It's just an interesting thing for the room that's not a puzzle or a combat or an RP. At this point I noticed that I had clumsily touched the uncured resin at some point. There was a nasty fingerprint there. So I thought I'll take some of this lichen that you get from the craft store and I could use that to cover it. I mean. 
just barely enough, it wouldn't be too bad. But then I thought, oh wait, this might be an opportunity. I could show the corrupting influence of the necrotic sap. I'm gonna take some Army Painter Dark Tone, just a black wash or an ink, and like dredge this through it. I'm going back to my water jar off screen here to help dilute it. I just keep dredging so that capillary action picks in and like a sponge, it soaks up in there and I get a nice gradient from black and corrupted all the way up to healthy and green. And the corrupted part will be touching the sap, covering my fingerprint. In this way, this terrain acts as a clue for the players at the table in the meta sense, which I know some DMs might take issue with, but whatever. I think it was a good save. Now back to the vines. I've painted them green with my airbrush, and I'm going to take some Athonian camo shade, which is like a dark olive green wash from Games Workshop, and I'm just going to slather that over the whole thing, give it some interest to darken it down a little bit. Because it is hot glue, it should hot glue easily to the wall. So I just pick two spots, cut it to length, and hot glued them on there. I had a little bit of excess when done, so I thought, yeah, perfect. I'll bust this up and attach it vertically to the walls in different places. Now, at this point, I was thinking it was pretty cool, and I was ready to call it done. So I shared some advanced pics with the guys in the Instagram chat that we had going as we're coordinating this project. And then I saw their works in progress. And, you know, I thought this was like a project of the week kind of thing, you know, fun collaboration. No, they decided to go and make like high watermark masterpiece, big moment type projects. So I tore down the video and went back to the workbench and back to the video editor. First of all, verticality. There's opportunity here. As the piece faces the players, I can have more on the uh, backside. So it's more like a cutaway, sort of like Jeremiah was doing. So I built up the back with some more of that cork. I also took one particularly curved piece and mounted it on some chipboard to make an alcove, like an outcropping. Flocked that with some earthy stuff. And then here's another skull from that GW Skulls kit. This is the physical manifestation of what's left of the tree's spirit. It has a few moments of sanity left. And if the players find this alcove, they might be able to talk to it and learn something. Or maybe they anger it and then all the plants attack. Who knows? Now, one thing that everyone else seemed to key in on that I failed to is that this is in the Feywild, which has a prototypical color scheme. And it hit me that this is the perfect opportunity that I've been waiting for to give these new inks a try. So they go straight into the airbrush and I just sporadically put on splotches of teal and magentas and purples where there's necrosis starting to happen. So the outside of the tree, that's what's facing the actual Feywild, the perpetual dusk. So for that, I stuck mostly to the wash of pleasant teals and magentas. And inside, mixed it up a little more. There was no rhyme or reason to this. The whole thing took five minutes, and I made it a point not to overthink it. I just let myself be inspired by the work in progress pics I saw from the other guys. And now we can look at a final product. I think three or four times before on this channel, I've gone into a lengthy diatribe about you're not really done when you think you're done gotta start actually applying the crap that I talk about. Anyways, here it is. A playable interior for an ancient tree in the Feywild that's been taken up in residence by a lich. And so collectively, between myself, Jay of Jay's Tabletop Terrain, Eric of Eric's Hobby Workshop, Colin the Crazy Crafter, and Jeremiah of Art Jeremiah Fame, we have constructed a pretty cool, interesting, one-shot fantasy adventure. Side note, we are also putting together a module, collecting all our work. It will be usable for a DM at the table. I don't know if it will be finished by the time these videos air, so check the video description and when it's done, the link will be there. My profound and humble thanks for including me on this go out to Jay, Eric, Jeremiah, and Colin. Again, there are links in the video description below for each of their fifths of this grand project. Thank you for joining me today. I am Wylock. I'll see you next time. Make things and play games.